Alan, welcome to Real Talk. Of course. Yes. So let me start off by asking you, is there anything that you see wrong with DeepIn today that needs fixing? Yeah, as I was talking about in um, the keynote right now is uh, DeepIn is not really easy to build and also it's not usable. That's the two most important problems in DeepIn right now. Hmm. Can you expand, expand on that? Yes, for the not buildable part is because you know DeepIn has a very large tech stack that makes the team you know, really hard to try the, their ideas in a parallel fashion. That's why we haven't identified the PMF for DeepIn yet. Hmm. Right? The trying is just too slow and uh, too limited. For two, like a DPN is not usable, is be because each DPN is more like a silo network. So they're not talking with each other. So they're not talking with AI systems. They're mm. not talking with DPN, uh, DeFi systems per se. So they're limiting their, their self into like an isolated network. That's why like a DPN is not too useful today. Mm. And, and do you have a specific vertical or use case that you think we the first to break through that usability barrier? Um, we do think you know, maybe I have this theory about the verifiability, right? Mm. I think each DP network has to be verified in a way, so that's why it's trustworthy enough to be used by another system. So the other system could be a DeFi system, could be a DP system, could be an AI system. Mm. Let's use DeFi as an example, right? So if like the DP network can verifiably prove itself to the DeFi protocol, that is just making this much protocol revenues on a daily basis, then the DeFi protocol will be insured enough to maybe lend me some money to the DP network. And the DP network can actually purchase more devices, grow its you know, coverage, utility, you know, try to leverage to grow. Hmm. And you know, maybe making more product revenue so they can continue this leverage processing. Gotcha. Okay, interesting. So so taking a step back. From a high level, why is DPIN the most interesting problem to be working on in the world right now? Right. I, I have been like a, working at Uber for two years during its hyper growth stage. So I saw the magic of the sharing economy, how it works, right? So Uber is not a company that has so many taxes to serve people. It's just like a matchmaking platform. Mm -hmm. By using like a proper incentive, of course, they're not doing tokens, they're most like a fiat incentives. Um, to a driver and riders, they actually they bring up this, this huge business globally, right? So this is amazing. Apply the same thing to the deeping space. I feel like there are so many similarities between sheer economy and deeping right now. Sure. Yeah. So we just have to find like a right, right angle to serve people in a more sort of like a P2P way. And, and also if you think about it from another angle, like a deeping is around this like a democratizing of the technology in the past, and then like a big corporations, so they can have the capability to do a base station, to build a car, to you know have a watch, so on and so forth. But for now, it's not, right? Everybody can actually have a base station, like a helium router, whatever, in your backyard and serving people nearby. So this is also a long line of democratizing the technology. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's sort of this insight, it sounds like you had at Uber, that this incentive network peer-to-peer -peer incentive network is a superpower exactly. that can harness enormous amounts of, of human energy, and you're applying that to deep. That's yeah. very true, yes. Yeah. So so tell me about the uh, the Polygon partnership. There's some, some alpha here, I, th I believe. Yeah, of course. So IOTAX, we're not just building like the entire modular stack for IOTAX layer one. Of course, we love IOTAX layer one, but we're more kind of open up ourselves to different like a mainstream layer ones. Polygon being the first. So we, are very, uh, so we are very excited to working with Polygon team, actually bringing deep into Polygon, help, helping in like uh, deep in projects and builders on Polygon to grow and scale. So, so what do you think is the most interesting problem you're working on right now? So we're working like a two thesis, like I was talking about, how do we address this like a not easy buildable uh, pain points for deep in? So we have a thesis, you know, like a modularity this is to address this issue. And another one is how can we make sure like the DP net network is verifiable so it's become composable and eventually usable, right? So that's a lot, another kind of like things we're working to address this issue. So we actually have two products to launch mm -hmm. addresses verifiability. Uh, one is called IOID. It's sort of like this identity system, very specific design for the DP devices, network users, and the network itself. Uh, try to bring verifiability and composability to deeping. And another one is WebStream. 
which has been like working on, you know, we have been working on this for two years, okay, right. believe it, right? <laughs> uh, so that's kind of a word first option compute protocol that really, really focus on the deep in verification. So those are your favorite, okay, gotcha. So, so let's say uh, Deepin and Iotex are maximally successful. You, your wildest dreams are, are achieved. What does it look like in five years? Yeah, that's exactly what I was talking with um, a lot of people, right? So if what do we do actually makes it possible for a very small team in Latin or Africa in those developing countries, they can very easily setting up like a Wi-Fi network or wireless sharing yeah, right. or transportation to serve 500 people, or even 300 people, I think that's a huge success mm -hmm. to what do we do to, to, to myself as well. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice to said. Thanks so much for your time, Rylan. All right. Thank you, man. Cool. Yeah, nice one.